What's up guys? This is Jigs Crypto and welcome to my channel. All of the links for the news are in the description below if you want to check it out. Also, make sure to like the video to help the channel. It also helps people to discover our videos in this channel. Now, let's take a look at our daily crypto news. So, first off, we have from Coindesk.com. Ukraine bought weapons, drones, with crypto donations. As we highlighted from the article, Ukraine's government bought weapons, unmanned aerial vehicles, or UABs, better known as drones, and digital rifle scopes, besides non-lethal tools, with some of the 60 million in crypto donated after Russia invaded the European nation earlier this year. An official rebuilt in a new breakdown of expenditures. Right? So, Mike Halo Fedorov, um, comment down below if I pronounce it correctly. Um, Ukraine's Minister for Digital Transformation tweeted the breakdown on Wednesday, which revealed the government had used some of the 54 million worth of funds raised by a crypto to purchase lethal weapons and launch an English news platform. Another 6 million has yet to be spent, right? So, yeah, they're spending with lethal weapons using the crypto donations. And um, I think it's good that if they're going to be having, you know, um, this English news platform. Continuing. Ukraine donation website acknowledges the drone and lethal weapon purchases, although the displayed figures differ from Fedorov's calculation. As quoted here, we, the digital ministry, converted crypto and sent it to our defense ministry. They decided that they need something, so open and close lethal weapons. We are at war and we can defend ourselves with every mean possible. Um, as per Deputy Minister Alex Bornyakov said on being asked about the earlier statement that they would only buy non-lethal weapons through crypto donations. So Russia invaded Ukraine in February, prompting the country to launch multiple donation drives in an effort to beef up its defense and equipment using crypto in an unprecedented way. And lastly, the breakdown also confirmed what government officials had previously told Coindesk about using crypto donations to buy drones, medical kits for, for soldiers, and ter thermal imagers. Well, I think uh, they're just defending themselves regarding, you know, their uh, dispute with, with Russia. So, um, I think having some medical kits, you know, using those crypto um, donations, buying drones, not sure how they're going to be using the drones there. So, yeah, we'll probably some get some more news regarding this. Let's see. Next, um, sorry, there's still some continuation here um, in the Ukraine uh, about weapons and drones. So, as we also highlighted in the... Um, Article, Born Jacob told Coindesk that more than 5 million spent on weapons requested by Ministry of Defense were lethal weapons. So, it was the Ministry of Defense that requested it. We don't want to inform Russia which lethal weapons we are buying, Born Jacob said. So, Born Jacob said the lethal weapons were, as quoted, defense weapons, not offensive ones. So, it's a defensive weapons, but on being asked... What are defense weapons? He said, no comment. Of course, they don't want to disclose it. So, uh, Russia won't, won't be able to know, you know what kind of weapons those are, right? As quoted here, our commitment to transparency and accountability allow people who donated crypto see exactly how their donations have been distributed. In order to prevent the occupants from tracking efforts, we have decided not to reveal some sensitive information until we have won the war, he added. So it's still ongoing. 
uh, last last quote here, we aren't going to give a list of every single thing we bought, but this is a start. We are still continuing to purchase night vision goggles and bulletproof vests, but we have started spending more on fighting the propaganda. This is new. We have also started spending in the new Ukraine media, United24, an English news platform. Uh, as quoted, said by Born Yakov, told Coindesk in a recent interview. All right. Next in our article here, coming from thecrypt.co, South Korea to block Qcoin, Poloniex in crackdown on unregistered crypto exchanges, right? As we highlighted from the article, South Korean customers could lose access to more than a dozen crypto exchanges as local authori authorities clamp down on foreign businesses who they say are operating in the country without proper registration. Some 16 unregistered providers have been identified as offering services to Koreans without registering with the right authorities. A press release issued by the country's Financial Services Commission, FCS, said on Thursday. An intelligence unit of the FCS has reported the platform to the country's investigative authority and asked that domestic access to their website be blocked. All right. I think per country can do that. The exchanges in questions were named as Qcoin, MEXC, Pemex, XT.com, BitTrue, CB.com, BitGlobal, CoinW, CoinX, AAX, ZoomX, Poloniex, BTSEX, BTCC, DigiPinex, and Pionex. There's, that is a lot of exchanges. Um, next is, according to the FCS, FSC, FSC, sorry, they were found to be targeting Korean customers with Korean language websites and by holding promotions targeting local consumers. And the authority warned the, that unregistered exchanges lack protections such as certified information security management systems which are required under Korean law. This, they said, could leave them open to security breaches. Hopefully, um, South Korea reaches to these exchanges and if there's, you know, if this exchanges wants to cooperate with the, their local government, I think that's a good way to, you know, um, not just immediately block this this kind of exchanges in their in their country. It's better if they work it out uh, in these companies, right? Moving on, um, this is coming from nytimes.com. Um, they lost crypto in the crash. They're trying to get it back. So we highlighted here. Um, I think this is oh no no. Uh, this is just a, a, a simple one one page. Um, so in a, a frenzied effort, investors are trying to recover lost funds from Celsius Network, a crypto firm that imploded this summer. David Little was starting to lose hope, like thousands of other investors. He had lost a, a large chunk of his cryptocurrency savings. Some of that once accounted for more than half of his network. Wow, half of his network. When the experimental crypto bank Celsius Network filed for bankruptcy this summer. Then he had an idea. In July, Mr. Little, a 35-year-old engineer, still young, in Houston, wrote a letter to the U.S. Bankruptcy Court for Southern District of New York, arguing that he and others who had deposited their digital currencies in a special type of Celsius account should be able to withdraw the funds. Soon he stated getting calls from the fellow depositors, a man who was struggling to pay rent, a woman who had lost her retirement savings. That's sad, right? Oh, man. Um, next is Mr. Little started a group chat that grew to include hundreds of Celsius customers. Within days, they raised $100,000 to hire 
the law firm Togut, Seagal, and Seagal to press their case in court. And lastly, apart from Mr. Little's group, at least one other customer coalition has hired a lawyer to recover a share of Celsius' remaining assets. An unusual show of grassroots activism for a bankruptcy case, right? Um, yeah, small small investors um, usually take the big hits, right? Um, next is this coming from Mashable.com. Ethereum's The Merge is the most important event in crypto this year. Here's why. Um, I think this is a couple of now. Two pager here. Let me grab a quick drink here. Um, as as highlighted from the article here, the world's most popular blockchain platform is about to undergo a radical change that will make it greener and pave the way for many optimizations. It's immensely important for the nascent spaces of decentralized finance and NFTs. On the flip side, its immediate effects on Ethereum speed scalability and peace are often overstated so we'll 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 go through with that so um we'll, we'll get we'll get some clarity uh clari clarification about the speed scalability and peace in this coming verge on september uh middle of september right let's continue with the article here there's no set date um for the merge but the transi transition has already successfully been made on Ethereum testnets. Each of those testnet merges can be thought as dress rehearsals for the real thing. Now that those rehearsals went well, the merge can be activated on Ethereum's main net. Ethereum developers have confirmed that this will happen fairly soon, likely on September 15 or 16, 2022. The exact time and date will get clearer as we approach the event. Continuing, the merge is a major upgrade of an extremely complex system. It could go wrong, right? Um, Ethereum could run slowly for a while or even halt completely. Hopefully not. <laughs> there could be other unforeseen errors or issues. Chances of any of this happening are small. Given all of the testing that went into this event, but they are not zero, all right? Um, hopefully, it all goes smooth, right? The merge also changes how the entire Ethereum network is secured. In a proof-of-work system, it's hard to cheat the system because it would require a lot of computational power to do so. In a proof-of-state system, cheating the system would require a mass um, amassing a huge amount of Ethereum. Ethereum's developer claim proof of stake is secure and it has been used in several other major blockchains including Solana and Avalanche but there's a degree of risk involved, right? Continuing here, so some of the common misconceptions about the merge are ideas that all Ethereum problems mainly high gas fees and network speeds. Speed, all right? Um, will get solved by the merge. As written here, this is, isn't true, right? Um, the merge is a multi-stage process, and this part only paves the way for optimizations down the road, right? And also here, specifically, gas will not become cheaper following the merge. Likewise, transaction speed will mostly remain the same after the merge, according to Ethereum Foundation. So it's according to Ethereum Foundation, right? Um, finally, folks um, who have been staking their ETH ahead of the merge will not be able to withdraw it just yet. So we, uh, we know there's some ETH 2.0 staking out there. Um, so it will still not happen. <laughs> uh, this will be made possible after the Ethereum upgrade called Shanghai which will happen further 6 to 12 months. So after 15 or after after September, middle of September, uh, still need to count like 
6 to 12 months according to current plans in the future, right? With cryptocurrency being an extremely dynamic space, it's hard even for Ethereum's leaders to predict the network's long-term future. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin, however, recently gave an outline of the five stages of um, Ethereum development starting with the merge. So this is the start. There's, there's other more stages there. So after the merge comes the surge, which should bring massive scalability, meaning faster operations, thanks to L2s and a tech development called sharding. All right? <laughs> nice. Nice word there, sharding. <laughs> Hope everything is clear regarding, you know, um, the gas piece, network speed, um, uh, those kind of stuff. So um, still, still will not be um, implemented this coming the merge. So yeah, we need to still wait like more six or more more than six months. To be able to you know really feel the changes with with the ethereum change right next with our article here this is coming from cointelegraph.com um, ontario crypto exchanges impose 30k canadian annual limit on altcoin buys all right as we highlighted from the article canada-based crypto exchanges bitbuy and newton are enforcing a 30,000 canadian dollars annual buy limit for restricted coins for their users based in Ontario in order to protect consumers and amid tightened regulations. All right. Um, I think this is just more of a, you know, um, security protection for, for consumers. Under the new changes, Ontario-based crypto traders on Newton and other Canadian crypto platforms will be subject to an annual 30,000 Canadian net buy limit. On all cryptocurrency coins, excluding um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and Litecoin, so all all of their all of the coins except this four here, right? Um, Newton further clarified that if a trader bought and then sold a restricted coin, the sell amount would be subtracted subtracted from the limit. The limit resets every twelve months from the first purchase of restricted coins the buy limit come as the crypto platform announced on wednesday that it has officially registered as a re restricted dealer in the province of ontario which meant that they're now subject to the regulation set out by ontario securities commissions or osc lastly crypto i'm sorry canadian crypto exchange bit buy also confirmed similar purchase limits earlier in the year um noting that similar um restrictions also apply to users in the province of monitoba new brunswick newfoundland and labrador um nova scotia prince edward island northwest territories nunabut and yukon not sure if i pronounce it right then nunabut or not sure Comment down below if you know how to pronounce it correctly. Let's go to the next one. Um, still coming from Cointelegraph.com. Aussie, asset manager to offer crypto ETF using unique license variation. Um, Australian asset manager Monochrome Asset Management has landed the country's first Australian Financial Services License or AFSL for a spot crypto exchange traded Fund or ETF. Um, speaking to Coin Telegraph, Jeff Yeo, CEO of Monochrome Asset Management, said the AFSL approval is significant as until this point. Approved crypto ETFs in Australia only operate under General Financial Asset Authorization and only indirectly hold crypto assets. All right. Um, Yo. Um, Noted that monochrome crypto ETFs, on the other hand, will directly hold the underlying crypto assets and is specifically authorized by the Australian Securities and Investment Commissions, or ASIC, to do so. At this stage, there is no firm date that 
when the monochrome Bitcoin ETF or IBTC will be made available. So that's how they call it, monochrome Bitcoin ETF. But it's expected um, in September 2022. That, that's really close, uh, about a month or less than a month. Once the P PDS and TMD have been issued and subject to regulatory approvals. When the ETFs are made available, Yo says... Um, as quoted here, Monochrome will focus on BTC and Ethereum because they are the only two crypto assets currently identified by ASIC, right? As being suitable for retail ETF exposure. Um, over time and as the market matures, we will take an open-minded approach to make new products available. So um, they're starting starting with you know Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you know if I I believe if this goes well, they they should be able to add those those new assets in here. Um, lastly, Monochrome Asset Management was launched in early 2021 by former Binance Australia CEO Jeff Yu to push for institutional adoption of crypto assets in Australia. Their ETF plan has been in the works since February 2022 this year. Generally, the process for the financial service says license variation typically takes 6 to 12 months, which was the timeline in this case. So, yeah, so that's why it's saying um, it's it's likely to be expected this September 2022, right? All right. Um, next is, I think this will be our last article for today this is coming from bitcoinist.com why google has invested 1.5 billion in crypto focus companies um as we highlighted from the article here according to a report from research firm block data google's parent company has been actively investing in the crypto space the big tech giant and other major corporations in the legacy financial system have invested over $6 billion in digital asset companies from September 2021 to June 2022, right? Um, the report claims that Google, Samsung, BlackRock, and other corporations are investing in projects and products with the potential to improve their own offerings. Thus, the companies are investing in particular use cases, apparently with the objective of integrating them into their business models. The report claims that the amount invested by Alphabet and other companies is hard to track. The money flows via private funding rounds and other investment mechanism. Um, so, so yeah, the money flows via private funding rounds and other investment mechanisms, right? So Alphabet has invested in Parblox, Dapper Labs, Voltage, and Digital Currency Group. Only the latter company has one of the biggest portfolios in the space with companies like Grayscale, Abra, Genesis, BitPay, and others. Right? Corporations are securing their positions in the crypto industry by investing across multiple sectors. As mentioned, Samsung has been diversifying its portfolio with a particular interest in non-fungible tokens or NFTs and the metaverse with a capital injection into Yuga Labs, uh, which, which has the Board Ape Yacht Club, and Sky Mavis, which has the Axie Infinity. All right? That's a lot of money, 1.5 billion investing in crypto focus companies. Right? Um yeah, I think that's it. Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe and hit the notification bell to get updated with the latest videos. And this is Jigs Crypto signing out.